This will be presented uh, by Dr. Edith Perez, who is the Deputy Director at Large for the Mayo Clinic Cancer Center in Jacksonville. And this is, these are the long-awaited findings of a, of a Phase three clinical trial called ALTO. This is a post-operative adjuvant therapy trial for HER2-positive uh, breast cancer. And uh, Edith, welcome. Thank you. Uh, good morning. We and others had uh, participated in uh, setting what is currently the standard for management of patients with her 2 breast cancer uh, via studies that were partially funded by the National Cancer Institute. But after those results became available in 2005, we uh, understood that, that further work needed to be done. So ALTO is a reflection of that continued work. This study was a collaborative effort that was global with uh, support uh, from the National Cancer Institute but also as an example of the kind of work we can do together, this trial was also supported by industry, specifically GSK. The ALSA trial enrolled 8,381 women based on their tumors expressing HER2, either the HER2 protein or the HER2 gene. The main question addressed in this study was whether we could improve adjuvant anti her to therapy for patients with early stage breast cancer. So we evaluated four different ways of administering anti her to therapy. Either trastuzumab as the control arm, lapatinib, or the sequential administration of trastuzumab for three months followed by lapatinib for the subsequent part of the year, or the dual anti her to blockade with the administration concurrently of trastuzumab combined with lapatinib. But as you see from this slide, all patients received backbone chemotherapy, where the chemotherapy could be administered before any of the anti her 2 therapy, or the chemotherapy on the sign 2 could be administered starting concurrently with the chemotherapy. Additionally, you can see that in this trial, the type of chemotherapy could be anthracycline uh, taxane-based, so ultimately, about 97% of the patients enrolled in ALTO received anthracycline-based chemotherapy, which is actually quite relevant related to the tolerability I will later present. Here at the meeting, we will not be presenting the data of the second arm, uh, the lapatinib alone arm, as this study closed prematurely due to futility. Of course, we plan to present the results of this arm a little bit later in the year. Here we have some of the study objectives of ALTO with the primary endpoint being disease-free survival with the definition uh, included on this slide. Importantly, ALTO had uh, uh, statistics and a statistical design worthy of discussion with you. We had planned for 850 disease-free survival events to be able to compare or have statistical power to compare the lapatinib plus trastuzumab dual blockade versus the single agent trastuzumab uh, comparison or 4.5 years of median follow-up, whichever occurred first. It's also important to realize that in ALTO, we planned to evaluate whether the sequential arm of trastuzumab followed by lapatinib could be non-inferior to the controlled trastuzumab arm. Well, what happened? Well, we observed 555 such disease-free survival events at a median follow-up time of 4.5 years, which is why we're reporting uh, the data here at ASCO. Also of relevance is that the p-value of less than or equal to 0.025, not the usual 0.05 that you hear in many studies, was required for statistical significance in order for us to test both hypotheses, either that the dual blockade was going to be better than trastuzumab or that the sequential use of the two anti her therapies could be non-inferior to trastuzumab alone. Now to some results. Here is the primary graph describing to you disease-free survival in ALTO for the three arms we are reporting, trastuzumab alone, trastuzumab followed by lapatinib, or the concurrent administration of the two agents in green. As you can see from uh, these lines, as well as the uh, statistical uh, numbers, you can see that this study failed to demonstrate that lapatinib added to the benefit of uh, trastuzumab 
in terms of disease-free survival for patients with HER2-positive early-stage breast cancer, uh, because it did not reach the p-value of less than 0.025 that was required for statistical significance. So although the hazard ratio for the concurrent arm was 0.84, uh, it did not meet uh, the statistical threshold. And as you can see in the arm of trastuzumab followed by lapatinib, uh, the hazard ratio was 0.96. Another way to look at the data is that patients overall did pretty well in that the four-year disease-free survival rate for the three arms were 88%, 87%, and 86%. Here we have the data of overall survival. And at this time of follow-up, there's no statistical difference in overall survival for the patients who received either the dual blockade, the sequential introduction of lapatinib versus single-agent trastuzumab. As you see, the four-year overall survival rate also looks uh, good, 95% for patients enrolled uh, in this trial. One slide related to adverse events to highlight the point that we uh, paid attention to some specific uh, side effects in addition to globally evaluating safety. But what we observed was for the uh, three side effects of, of interest with lapatinib, diarrhea, hepatobiliary, as well as skin toxicity, we observed that patients who received lapatinib had higher rates of those toxicities compared to the group of patients who received trastuzumab alone. A very important aspect of ALTO was the finding of cardiac safety. Remember, about 97% of the patients had received anthracycline-based chemotherapy, and by defined primary cardiac events per protocol, we had a less than 1% incidence of, of cardiac events. This is extremely important because of the consideration of anthracyclines with antihir2 therapy being so critical for patient management. In conclusion, the event rate uh, that we observed was lower than anticipated, 555 instead of the 850 at the 4.5 years median follow-up, essentially telling us that patients are doing better than we had anticipated. Two, the ALTO trial did not meet its primary endpoint of demonstrating that uh, adding lapatinib concurrent with trastuzumab or in a sequential fashion to trastuzumab improved the disease-free survival. The results of ALTO actually, I think, extend beyond the study per se, because one of the important aspects of ALTO was to determine whether we could corroborate that the dual blockade uh, improvement that we had seen in NeoAlto in terms of achieving uh, an improvement in pathological complete response could be translated into improved patient outcome in, in, the, in the adjuvant setting, and ALTO did not demonstrate that. So we could not uh, observe that PCR in NeoAlto correlated with disease-free survival in the adjuvant setting. Again, important for the breast cancer field overall. Lapatinib toxicities were as expected. Cardiac toxicity remained low. And of course, follow-up of study participants is continuing. Thank you very much. So uh, thank you, Edith. Uh, I want to um, first just highlight something about this study. Um, this study really operates, these results, on two levels. Uh, on the one hand, from a practical point of view, uh, this is the kind of study that, if positive, would have changed practice tomorrow morning uh, because these drugs are available and the adjuvant setting is one where there's a tremendous um, drive to reduce recurrence and prevent, obviously, early death from disease. But the second level on which this operates is a more technical one with tremendous potential implications right now. Uh, last year, the FDA in the United States for the first time ever approved a drug in the preoperative setting on the basis of an increased PCR rate. That drug, per, per, per JETA you know it as, pertuzumab, um, is a drug that's been studied in the adjuvant setting. And the um, hope obviously is that by uh, getting the drug into the market based on PCR, we would ultimately save lives. That may turn out to be true for that drug. We're going to have to wait for the results of that study, which is called Affinity. But if the question uh, that, that, the, that we have from a societal point of view is, can we routinely use the preoperative setting and the improvement in pathologic complete okay. response as a reliable surrogate for disease-free and overall survival? Then the answer, at least from Alta right now, is maybe not. 
And this is going to, I think, cause a tremendous amount of high-level technical scientific discussion in terms of drug development. So I just want to make sure that everybody gets the, that this is a really important study. This is part of the reason that it's on the plenary session, but it's important because it has profound long-term implications right now in terms of drug development. And when you look at some of the results across the meeting for PCR in the preoperative setting, remember that one of the arguments being made is that we can use that PCR to reliably predict long-term outcomes and keep thinking about what this study seems to indicate. So 